Hi guys, Morgan Davidson here. I am back on the YouTube game. I took a little bit of a break with the holidays and had eye surgery and all sorts of stuff. So <laughs> I am back and this is a mixed media on black paper tutorial. And I'm using the term tutorial very loosely because I was, this is my first time drawing on black paper and I was kind of figuring things out as I went. So this will be a good testament to what, you know, what to do, what not to do exploring the different mediums and trying to figure out how to do things the right way. I, I learned a lot of what not to do in this. So let's get started with what I'm doing right now. I put down a little bit of the white colored pencil. I started off with the colored pencil line work, which shows up pretty bright, but as you can see, it's not as bright as it, as it should be. So in my head, I'm, you know, let's do pan pastel. So I start going on top with some pan pastel to fill in the shapes and brighten everything up a little bit. And you'll be able to see this when I get to the point I spray fix it and it just kind of uh, disappears. So it was a bit of an issue that I was battling the entire time. And I kind of just figured out that maybe just doing colored pencil spray fixative and then going back on top with colored pencil work the best to get that bright luminosity that I was going for. So, as you can see, I'm using whites, I'm using um, cream colors, some beige, and uh, some flesh tones for the bones. Obviously, x-rays aren't <laughs> this color. I just, I love adding color to things, bringing things to life, and so that was kind of the route I was going for with this. So, I'm going in with colored pencil, and if you look at the brightest parts, it's still not that bright. And I want it to get much brighter than that. And that was the goal and what I was struggling with this entire drawing. Um, so at this point, like I said, I'm just going on top with pan pastel thinking it was going to work because I've only ever used pan pastel on white paper, and which works really well, um, especially when you're toning things, uh, trying to get smooth background shades and stuff like that very smooth values. So here, that's when I spray fixed it, and it almost completely disappeared. And I was like, oh no, this is going to be a little bit more of a challenge than I thought. I also was struggling quite a bit with the texture of this paper. I believe it was a Canson illustration board, but I will look that up and put it on the description below. Um, it was very textured and much different than what I was used to working with. So that was another challenge I was, you know, kind of figuring out as I was going. But as you can see, after I spray fixed it, however, the colored pencil is much brighter. And you can kind of see as I go in and refine some of these bone areas that are very dense and light, that the second layer is much more bright and closer to what I'm going for with the opaque bright colors. Another thing I struggled with while I was working on this was the anatomy. Obviously, I am not a doctor or a nurse, and I was trying my best to get everything accurate. I know that when you do a drawing like this, people that do know how things are supposed to look analyze it very closely and are like, you know, the, you know, the sinuses aren't supposed to actually look like that. This isn't right. And I didn't want that to be an issue. So I studied a lot of different x-rays and kind of combined a lot of different ones to make this image that I wanted in Photoshop. And luckily I have a cousin that's a nurse, so she kind of looked at it and helped me piece things together the way that they're supposed to look. But besides the anatomy, the second goal that I had was getting the bright colors to really pop on this black paper. So. Right now, I'm going in and filling in kind of where the brain should go, the skull, and making sure that that is brighter than it is now. So again, I thought that if I went in with pan pastel on top of the colored pencil, maybe then it would stay put when I spray fixed it, but it kind of disappeared again. So like I said, I was kind of going back and forth and playing around with what I thought might work and what really didn't work. And I realized that for this, pan pastel probably isn't the best. It's very time consuming. I'd probably have to do many layers to get, you know, the actual values that I wanted and colored pencil achieve that much quicker. So I'm going in and I really followed my reference closely on this one. It's one of those drawings where I couldn't really, you know, when I, I do the seasons and the girls and stuff like that, they have the wispy hair and I could draw it the way I want and add 
things in there and kind of play around with the content. But with this one, I had to follow my reference very closely because it was such a technical drawing. I wanted to make sure everything was just right. So anyways, I'm going back in with some more colored pencil and trying to smooth things out. Like I said, it's a very textured paper. So that's something pretty new to me because I'm used to drawing on Strathmore Bristol Smooth, which is very smooth compared to this paper. So I kind of decided instead of battling the textured paper so much, I would leave some of that texture in, which I think really helped. In my head, you know, I, I'm kind of very particular about how I want a texture to be, but with this one, I just kind of let it go. And I decided that the texture was something I'll embrace and try to work with. So I enjoyed the drawing much more after I decided to give that battle to the paper and let them win that one. So <laughs> I'm talking about the paper like it's a person here. Anyways, I started to, with this flower, just decided to not even mess with pan pastel and go in with only colored pencil. And I'm keeping it simple and I'm just going in with, you know, three or four colors, not going extremely crazy with the values because on black paper, I'm starting to realize the benefits of black paper and working in an opposite way uh, instead of darkening your values and keeping the lights, you know, the paper, I'm doing the opposite with this. So it was switching the way I've been working for the, you know, past six, seven years. So now, as you can see, I'm going in just with color pencil like I did with the flower with the rest of it. I think I used some of the pan pastel to tone some of the values because um, I didn't want to build up the colored pencil way too much. And that's another thing I realized when working with spray fixative and, and doing layers is a whole other issue. Before I always just had issues with building it up and getting wax build up and having little pockets of wax and weird textures come from that. But when I built it up too much with the spray fixative layers underneath, little flakes would come up and it would just be the black paper. And I, that's something I learned that maybe it's best to try to do as few layers as you can and make sure that you try to accomplish the values and the textures that you want as early as you can but on black paper, you know, you do have to do additional layers. And so I just spray fix it and now I'm going back on top and you can see how much brighter it is after spray fixing it. It makes a huge difference. I also failed to mention that the spray fixative that I've been using is Prismacolor Premier's matte spray fixative, the final matte um, spray fixative. And as I've discovered and maybe you guys have found something that also works really well but it works really well with colored pencils specifically uh, a lot of the other workable fixatives and things like that are meant for pastels primarily and have a glossy surface and don't work well with colored pencils so I found that these work the best but then again I'm also exploring new products and I'll let you know if I find anything else but now I'm going and doing some of the final details in my drawing, trying to get that rib cage looking right and everything kind of lined up. Like I said, the reference was my guide on this one. I had a little bit of fun when I did the glow around the edge and softened things up and kind of added that extra luminosity from my imagination, not necessarily something you would see in an, uh, an x-ray from your doctor, but I get, you know, I get to have a little fun with this. So that's what I did with this. And I'm struggling a little bit with getting the hand bright enough. This one was a little bit more difficult. So I did go in towards the end with one of my Winsor & Newton markers. Um, it's like a oil paint marker. And that worked really well on just getting some of the finer little highlights around the edges of some of the bones. And that's the thing I like it, is you're not really limited to using one or two mediums. If you have a paint marker just laying around that'll help you achieve these brighter highlights or you know something that'll help smooth everything out a little bit more. Uh, I highly recommend doing that and getting maybe like a, I, I get art snacks and they send you uh, four or five little random art supplies every month. Some stuff that I would probably never buy if I was in an art store. But I get to have that around and get to play with them with some of my illustrations and and find different ways to work on problems that I probably wouldn't be able to work well with if I didn't have all these little different mediums laying around. 
But anyways, I in the actual drawing now, I always go off on little tangents, but I'm doing final little um, details and highlights, and I kind of come up with a problem, especially when working on that second arm bone. I start really getting that flaking from having too many layers and pressing too hard. And the best way I combat that is going in with little uh, bits of paint, maybe some marker, trying to smooth everything out. And that, that's really when you get to that point, it's not like you have to throw out your entire drawing. You just can manage the damage as best as you can with the different mediums that you have. And I think that's what every artist does when you're working on something for the first time. Obviously, the next time that I use black paper, I'll be aware of how these different mediums work with it. And layering to achieve the values that I want is difficult, but I'll be able to understand it better and work with what I have a little bit more. You know, when you're working on something for the first time, it's just a lot of trial and error. So I also realized that when I was doing the drawing that the bone, the second arm bone, looks like it's part of the one in the front. So I was trying to quickly fix that. Also combating the little blasted flakes that kept on popping up. It was such an issue at the very end when I was trying to get those nitpicky details in. But I think I, I resolved that issue fairly well and kept on moving on. And there you see me going in with my little Windsor Newton paint marker, which I highly recommend. You can see it gets those little uh, bright highlights perfectly, I, I think. So I'm going in and smoothing out all my final little things, adding in a, a few of the bone textures and things like that. So this is my final drawing. I you know, scanned it in and made sure that it looked as close to the drawing as I could get it. I hope this was helpful. I, like I said, it is more or less a trial and error video, not necessarily a tutorial, but I hope that my mistakes and different things that I did possibly helped you in your journey on using black paper. I know that I will definitely use it more in the future. So don't forget to subscribe. I am doing a oil rub tutorial next and then I think I was going to compare and contrast a few of the other mediums that I use for bases next. So I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys next time.